farm, family, community. This is Midwest Farm Weekly. Good morning to you and thanks for joining us on Midwest Farm Weekly. I'm Melaine Wells. On today's show, we take you to World Dairy Expo with an emphasis on youth. They are engaging the future of the farming industry. Then apple season could wrap up early this year due to our extended warm weather. So we head to the orchard for an update and connecting kids to their food. We're going to take a look at how the growing farm to school program is encouraging healthy eating and it's boosting our local budgets. The golden age of dairy is the theme of this year's World Dairy Expo. It happened this past week in Madison. I spent the day taking in this 57 year tradition. You know, Wisconsin gets to claim being America's Dairyland, but we are so excited that once a year we get to be, we get to play to the globe. Everybody on the planet is assembling here in Madison, Wisconsin once again. With more than 50 educational opportunities, this annual event is truly about making connections and continuing education at every age. Youth play such a vital role here at the at World Dairy Expo and they are the future of our industry so we are so pleased to have them here and be so invested in this show. They're full participants. In addition to the cattle and FFA contests, there are also dozens of field trips bringing students to World Dairy Expo. Seeing all of the people that are here that represent the technology in this industry, the people that milk cows across this continent. More than 3,000 cattle are registered, coming from 39 states and parts of Canada. Outside the arena, the trade show features 75 new companies, many focused on energy efficiency. We're expecting almost 3,000 international attendees this year, representing more than 100 countries. And I can share, the country of Brazil is coming in droves this year. There's a a buying delegation here that's here on the TEP program. Their purpose for attending is to canvas the trade show and establish trade relationships between the U.S. exhibitors here and Brazil. But I would point out that our trade show is not just U.S. based. We have trade show exhibitors here from multiple countries as well. So when you come to World Dairy Expo, in every aspect of the show, it is a global meeting place and global participation. A hot topic of conversation at Expo, possible aid for farmers in the south who are trying to salvage their crops that were damaged by the recent hurricane. Before Helene made landfall, farmers rushed to harvest what cotton they could. That season is at peak in Georgia with those fragile cotton bowls susceptible, of course, to wind and rain. Farms across the south are reporting significant damage. The pecan crop was also particularly vulnerable. The earliest varieties were being harvested, but most of that crop is usually gathered throughout late October. In addition to knocking this year's crop off of the branches, tree damage is a major concern because some varieties of pecan trees can take up to 25 years to mature. And while some peanut farms are reporting significant damage, farms just outside the path of the hurricane actually benefited from a little extra rain. Peanuts are grown in 13 states with the bulk of them coming from Georgia, Florida and Alabama. Our sister station in Alabama explains the amount of work that goes into this phase favorite snack. For over 30 years, Fiddler Farms has been a hot spot for peanuts in Baldwin County. I mean, they they just get after these boiled peanuts now. I can't believe it. Fiddler says that this year, his crop is better than ever. And the secret ingredient, rain. The rain's been just right. I mean, we've had really, really good, good rain. Last year, we had about 90 days that didn't rain. And uh, last year, it was just terrible. Our peanuts wouldn't feel that good. Fiddler says last year's drought really hurt his crop and the farm's profit. Last year the farm harvested about 25 bushels of peanuts an acre. This year that same land is growing more than a hundred bushels. We've been lucky this year. If I if I could always grow peanuts like this year that would be I would be good. Here's another fact for you. Peanuts need about two inches of rain per week to thrive. Well, fall, of course, has been warmer than average here in Wisconsin, and it is speeding up our apple harvest. Local 5's Timothy Lateau shows us how orchards are reacting. The temperature feels like fall is still around the corner, but it came early to Misty Ridge Orchard in De Pere. 
or at least the apple picking did. This year um, with the weather, it's just all them later varieties are just coming in a lot quicker. Steve Gunnering began planting the six acre orchard in 2012 and has never had a year like this. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, and I've talked to other orchards that have been around for many, many years and they haven't experienced anything like this uh, either. Steve thinks that with the early start to spring and warmer temperatures at the beginning of fall, some kinds of apples have began to ripen two to three weeks earlier. We're picking a lot of our varieties that we pick in mid-October. We're picking them now already. The whole orchard was ripe all at the same time, basically. The warm weather coupled with a wet spring made conditions ripe for a healthy crop in its early arrival. They sized out well. We've got plenty of rain uh, for these apples to size out. So between the rain and the heat, it's really um, everything that apples like. Bees like the warm weather too, and it gave them a head start and allowed them to be more productive when cross-pollinating, making for a higher quality and more mature crop. A lot of times you can get these uh, cold days where the bees aren't working, but it warmed up enough where the, the bees were working and everything was getting uh, you know, all pollinated and it, it was really a good year that way too. Now it's all up to Steve and his small crew to get all 5,000 trees picked in the next couple of weeks. We're scrambling to make more room in our coolers to get the, the apples in the cooler, get them off the trees, get them picked. Fall has fallen, warm weather or not, in De Pere. Timothy Lito, Local 5 News. Misty Ridge is open through the end of October, but they say this should be the week at peak with the very most varieties available. Still to come, connecting farmers with schools. We'll take a look at how this model supports both the students and the community. Well, Jeremy Hansen here from Fox Valley Technical College for Life on the Farm. And joining me today is Kyle Wisniewski. Kyle, thank you so much for your time. Kyle, it, can you first start off by telling me, well, what do you do? Yeah, um, I'm the uh, Genhequa manager here at Oneida Nation. So I am the manager of one of the uh, self-governance uh, programs here with, uh, within the Oneida Nation. Right, and you have an event coming up this weekend, correct? Yes, we do. It's our uh, 31st annual Harvest and Husking Bee. Uh, one of the largest harvested husking bee in the region um, and we're very proud of the event. Uh, we most likely have right around 350 to 400 people um, attending this weekend. Right and you know what are we harvesting? We're harvesting a, a very unique crop to the Oneida Nation. Um, it's been with us since time immemorial um, and it fits right into our three sisters philosophy um, and it's our Oneida uh, white flint corn um, and we'll be harvesting right around uh, eight and a half acres of that corn. And, and how do you harvest it? We're going to be hand harvesting. Everything's going to be done by hand. Um, we do believe in the corn having a spirit as well as all of us community members having a spirit. So it's very important for us um, to carry a good spirit in between the foods that we are feeding our community and the people. So we know that 100% of this crop will be going to feed uh, our community. Right, and that was my next question. You know, what do you do with the corn that you harvest? Yeah, we're gonna dry it. It comes off at a very high moisture. So about half of the corn, right around 45%, um, still is in high moisture corn. So we can't pick it with a combine. It has to be hand picked. And then we also will hand braid the corn. Um, and it does sit in our shed for nearly two months, two and a half months to dry down. And then once it's dried down, we will make um, approximately 17 different food products out of it. And a few of the main products that we make are our white corn soup, um, corn mush, and then also Gunnestoha, what we call our, our traditional breads. Right. And, you know, I, I got to ask this, but where do you get the seed from? We save our seed year to year. We know that within um, indigenous communities, uh, we can't go through catalogs and pick different types of seeds. We want to grow seeds that are perfect for our climate, perfect for our environment but also produce a very nutritious uh, food for our community members. Um, a reason, a big reason why the, the program was um, in existence is to combat different diseases and things that Indian country have to go through, um, in particular diabetes. Um, we know that this corn here um, has right around 24 to 26% protein, mm -hmm. um, basically zero sugar. So it's very, very, very good for you. And we encourage any community member to come out and uh, try these foods. Right, and you know, it's a true open pollinated corn. Correct. We do some work around that as well. Um, we do ask um, neighboring farmers, um, non-indigenous neighboring, neighboring farmers, um, like when are you planting? So we can maybe miss their pollen. And tell me a little bit about the braids. Yeah, so. That you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, we'll pick the corn, um, and once it comes off, we have people that husk it, and that's tearing the husk off to the two or three strongest husk on the cob. And um, then what we'll do is we'll lop off that end knob that you see on the end of the cobs. Um, at that point, then we can put 65 cobs into a crate, and then it'll be somebody's job um, to create like a braid like this that we see behind us here. So let's go back to the event today. Is, uh, can anyone come to this? Yeah, the public is welcome. Um, it was our 31st annual. Uh, we will be open at 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. The parking is off-site at the Norbert Hill Center in Oneida, and you will get shuttled over uh -huh. um, just from the extreme volume of people that we will have here to keep things safe. Um, but we do really encourage the public to come out and see what the Oneida Nation has to offer through services and different agricultural activities that you might not see on another farm. Right. And it sounds like an excellent event. Uh, I hope, hope the weather, weather cooperates a little bit, Kyle. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate a little yep. bit of education on my part as well. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So for Life on the Farm, then, I'm Jeremy Hansen. Good morning, I'm Storm Team 5 meteorologist Alexis Staniak. Haven't seen too much rain come through within the past week, so still a big drought coming through most of parts of the northern half of the United States and a majority of the Midwest. Most places now seeing numbers about a quarter of an inch below average, but for the entire year so far for liquid precipitation. Here in Green Bay, we've accumulated just over 28 inches, still into the teens over in the Dakotas, about 23 inches up in International Falls, and then more rain accumulated areas south and east of Green Bay, including places like Indianapolis, Louisville and down into St. Louis, Missouri. Now as we head through the next week to even 10 days, doesn't look like a ton more rain is going to come through. In fact, most of the Midwest is really dry to our north and east. Looks like a good amount of rain will come through, but maybe we'll accumulate about a tenth of an inch of rainfall over the next week to week and a half at most. The Climate Prediction Center has almost the entire central half, central portion of the United States and further into the northern Great Plains, continuing into Montana in this very below average category for precipitation. Four corners should be a little bit above average as well as still into Florida. Precipitation will be likely be above average. And as we head through the next couple months, looks like we should eventually accumulate more rainfall above normal outlook uh, from the month of October all the way through December. Places to our south and west looks to stay below normal for precip all the way through the start of the winter months. Now we're going to see warmer temperatures return as well. Climate Prediction Center does have most of the western half of the Midwest, including the Great Plains and into eastern Montana in this very above average category for temperatures. While we do have the chance to go either above or below with equal chances uh, for temperatures to go either way as we head through the rest of the fall months and closer to winter. Areas to our south will likely stay above normal for temperatures as we head all the way through the end of fall and through the start of winter. Stay with us. More Ag News coming up after the break. With National Farm to School Month and National School Lunch Week both falling in October, the United States Department of Agriculture is highlighting the work being done to connect students and schools with agriculture. I recently spoke with USDA's Deputy Undersecretary for Food, Nutrition and Consumer Services, Cindy Long, about these partnerships. 30 million kids on an average day eat a school lunch or school breakfast, and they're just an incredible tool for not only supporting kids getting off to a healthy start, but also supporting local farmers, ranchers, you know, producers, and, and strengthening the local, local economy. USDA helps foster these partnerships in a number of ways, including training and grants to help districts and farmers open doors. We've provided almost $180 million directly for the use by schools to purchase local foods and serve them in the cafeterias. 67,000 schools nationwide participate in farm to school programs. That includes everything from school gardens and school, school greenhouses to partnerships with local producers uh, to, to education and teaching kids about um, how, to, how to harvest and prepare locally produced foods. So um, we, we see this as being a huge part of why school meals have gotten more nutritious over the years, why they're more appealing, and why there's so much excitement around school meals. Some districts say they are saving money by shopping local. Once you build that connection between the school and the local producer, or once a community has built the, the supply chain links to help farmers understand how to market and supply to schools, 
it can be such an economic boon, especially smaller and family farms who are always looking to, to expand their markets. You know, I, I like to tell the story of a farmer that I met not long ago. She explained how about 15 years ago, that family farm was in danger of going out of business. So they decided to explore whether there was a market there, whether there was potential there to work with the school district. And they did that. And the rest is, is kind of history for them. It really saved the farm. And it's one of their most important and stable sources of customers today. And the programs have an added benefit of exposing kids who are growing up more removed from agriculture to potential careers. This department and Secretary Vilsack are committed to fostering a new generation of, of farm leaders. And these programs absolutely do that. Uh, it also, th these activities also help kids learn about the connection with food. Where does food come from? It doesn't come from grocery stores. It comes from gardens and farms and ranches. Food as fuel, boosting the local economy and children's health. Because we know that these kinds of activities help kids learn that food can be healthy and still be delicious. In Wisconsin, some of that grant money is being used to help districts provide food that is culturally appropriate. For example, there are efforts in Stevens Point to add more traditional Hmong meals to their menu. Welcome back. With more than 20 flavors of brats, you'll want to fire up the grill to support this local business, or better yet, just head to their German Brat Fest that's happening this weekend. Melissa and Phil Elmer are joining us this morning. Nice to see you both. Nice to meet you. This is an incredible amount of brats, and we will get to how all of this helps local students in just a moment. But first, introduce us to your business. Absolutely. Phil has been doing this all his life. Tell us a little bit about the farm, Phil. Well, we was a dairy farm, and then we became a beef farm, and... And now we added pigs, and uh, it just keeps continuing to evolve more and more. And you all keep the time. adding more and more brat flavors. You have become so known for these. Tell me about a few. I know the list is long, but a few of the most creative ones you've be, uh, been, been popular for. Well, I'd say that the biggest one that we absolutely adore is the uh, bacon mac and cheese. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and that right there, if that if you don't like that, then we can tempt you with uh, things like mushroom rice, cranberry, um, chili chocolate, uh, whiskey cinnamon, bacon. I think we have a few to appeal to the palate. Teriyaki pineapple. Oh my golly. And we've really tried to be very creative and add mm. as many different flavors to have different options for everybody. A great time to sample and purchase is this Saturday for our Saturday viewers. What's going on? We actually have uh, just established a relationship with the Pulaski Middle School okay. Music Boosters, and oh, we're nice. very proud because uh, near and dear to my heart, my family had also been involved. My mother especially was involved in raising monies for schools oh, for nice. over 15 years, and we literally have uh, network now with the Pulaski Middle School Music Boosters Club okay. and this event is dedicated to be able to raise funds and help their middle school children to actually achieve some of their goals. They would like to be able to attend some of the actual high school events with oh, the nice. high school band okay. and the Pulaski High School Band has been very popular especially since they did get to go to the Rose Parade this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. So these kids are very motivated and we'd like to help them out. We'd love for you to join us and have you become part of our family and literally enjoy this event. There's going to be live music. Absolutely. We have wonderful children actually entertaining us. The Xanders Music Makers are the group mm -hmm. and they have been here before and we yes. are very proud to have them as our music. And some special deals, doing a little sampling, but you can also purchase that day, right? Right, so the samples are free. We'd love for you to taste all of our 21 brats. If you can stomach that, then we have a <laughs> wonderful lunch uh -huh. that we're preparing for you. It's a $10 donation, okay. which will go to the school, and we'll have either a full brat or hamburger lunch, side salad, and a side, and a dessert. Oh, my golly. And, and then we'll, yeah, too. we'll have a lot of cocktails, beer yeah. uh, to purchase Sounds as like well. a great event. And if you're watching us on Sunday, don't worry. You can still shop their products. Phil, how do we get a hold of these products year-round? Uh, we're located at 3709 County Road C, Pulaski, or phone number is 920-660-0652. And briefly, what does heritage pork mean? I saw that you were advertising that that's what this is. 
That is actually something that I'm very familiar with, and it's a breed that is okay. literally a naturally grown from Idaho mountains. We brought here to uh, Wisconsin. It's a red meat. Okay. It's a grass-fed product. We're very big into bringing natural, no hormones, no additives, and everything we do has nitrate-free ingredients. So that's very important to us. Well, our it's farm important to me to let our viewers know that they can shop year-round for this fabulous product. But join them if you are watching us on Saturday. Brats for breakfast, no one's judging. Thanks for being here, you guys. Absolutely, my <laughs> pleasure. Thanks for having us.